Welcome to Dental Digest Plus. Today's topic is composite resins in dentistry. Please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so that you can get regular updates for the new videos. Composite resin is widely used tooth colored restorative material in dentistry. Composite resin is widely used because of its aesthetic value and its durability. During the first half of the 20th century, silicates were the only tooth-colored aesthetic restorative materials available to restore the tooth. Although silicates release fluoride, which helps in preventing caries of teeth, they are no longer used to restore permanent teeth, because they severely erode and discolor within a few years. Acrylic resins are also tooth-colored material so they replaced the silicates during late 1940s, it is done because of their tooth-like appearance and acrylic resin is insoluble in oral fluids, they are easy to manipulate and they are low in cost. Unfortunately, these acrylic resins also have poor wear resistance and they shrink severely during curing, which causes them to pull away from the cavity walls and produce leakage along margins. Their excessive thermal expansion and contraction, cause further stresses to develop at the cavity margins, when hot or cold beverages and foods are consumed. These problems were overcome by the introduction of composites, by adding an inert filler to the unfilled acrylic resins. Now let's see the definition of composite material. In this definition it is mentioned that, one part of composite material is formed by a cross-linked polymeric material, in which we have added filler particles like silica and glass, and these filler particles are attached to the polymer with the coupling agents. Let's read this definition one more time. Composite is a highly cross-linked polymeric material, which is reinforced by a dispersion of amorphous silica, glass, and resin filler particles and they are bonded to the matrix by a coupling agent. Now let's take a look at this definition of the composite material. In this definition it is mentioned that, composite is like a solid material, which has two or more phases like matrix phase, dispersion phase, and interfacial phase, and they are combined to produce a better quality product with desired properties. The term composite originated in the field of material science. From a physical or mechanical point of view, a composite is a material consisting of two or more components, that are chemically bonded together, to provide overall properties superior to those of the individual constituents. Composite resins generally have three phases. 1. Matrix phase which is formed by the resins. 2. Dispersion phase, which is formed by the filler particles. And 3. Interfacial phase, which is formed by the coupling agents. Now let's take a look at the composition of the dental composite material. Dental composite is composed of a resin matrix, and filler materials. Coupling agents are used to improve adherence of resin to filler surfaces. These three are the main components of composite resin. Composites contain other components in addition to these primary constituents. An activator initiator system required in composites, to convert resin paste from a soft moldable filling material, to a hard durable restoration. Activation systems includes heat, chemical and photochemical initiated polymerization. Pigments are added in composite, which helps to match the color of tooth structure. Ultraviolet absorbers and other additives, are added to improve color stability of the composites. Polymerization inhibitors extend storage life, and provide increased working time for chemically activated resins.
Now let's take a look at the resin matrix. Resin matrix is a plastic resin material that forms a continuous phase and binds the filler particles. In which principal monomers are bisphenol glycidyl methacrylate, which is also called Bowen's resin, and urethane dimethacrylate. Other diluent monomers are also the part of the resin matrix. Because bisphenol glycidyl methacrylate and urethane dimethacrylate, have almost five times the molecular weight of methyl methacrylate, it reduces polymerization shrinkage proportionately. Please note that, methyl methacrylate which is present in unfilled acrylic resin, has the disadvantage of polymerization shrinkage, which is reduced by using bisphenol glycidyl methacrylate instead of methyl methacrylate, to create desired composite material. The use of a dimethacrylate also results in extensive cross-linking, which increases the strength and rigidity of the polymer. Bisphenol glycidyl methacrylate resin is the base for composite. In the late 1950s, Bowen mixed bisphenol A and glycidyl methacrylate, and they are thinned with triethylene glycol dimethacrylate to form the first bisphenol glycidyl methacrylate resin. Diluents are added to increase flow and handling characteristics, or provide cross linking for improved strength. Now let's take a look at the filler particles which forms the dispersed phase of the composite material. The primary purposes of filler particles are to strengthen a composite, and to reduce the amount of matrix material. Several important properties of dental composites are improved by increased filler loading. Reinforcement of the matrix resin, results in 1. As the filler content increases, the resin content decreases, therefore, polymerization shrinkage decreases. 2. Filler increases the strength and modulus of elasticity, so there are less chances of the fracture of the restoration. 3. Filler increases abrasion resistance, thereby less chances of the wearing of the restoration. 4. There is reduction in water sorption, which reduces the softening and staining of the restoration. 5. There is reduction in thermal expansion and contraction, so less chances of the dislodgement of the restoration. 6. Fillers also improves the translucency of the composite material, and in some cases they increases radio opacity and diagnostic sensitivity through the incorporation of strontium and barium glass, and other heavy compounds that absorb X-rays. Filler particles are most commonly produced by grinding quartz, to produce particles ranging in size from 0.1 to 100 micrometer. Submicron silica particles of 0.04 micrometer size, referred to as microfillers, are obtained by a pyrolytic or precipitation process. Quartz has been used extensively as a reinforcing filler, particularly in the early versions of dental composites. It has the advantage of being chemically inert and yet also very hard, making it abrasive as well as difficult to grind into very fine particles. Types of fillers used are Quartz Fused silica Aluminum silicates Barium glasses Borosilicates and glasses. Now let's take a look at the coupling agents. It is essential that filler particles be bonded to the resin matrix. The bond between the two phases of the composite is provided by a coupling agent. This allows the more flexible polymer matrix to transfer stresses to the more rigid and stiffer filler particles. Organic silanes like gamma methacryloxy propale trimethoxy silane, 
is commonly used as coupling agent in composite resins. A properly applied coupling agent can impart improved physical and mechanical properties, and inhibit leaching, by preventing water from penetrating along the filler resin interface. Since coupling agents work best with silica particles, therefore all modern composite resins are based on silica-containing fillers. Now let's talk about the Activator Initiator System. Activator Initiator System is for starting the polymerization process in which activator is needed to initiate the polymerization process. Both monomethacrylate and dimethacrylate monomers polymerize by the addition polymerization mechanism, which is initiated by free radicals. The free radicals can be generated by chemical activation, or by external energy activation, like heat, light, or microwave. Let's talk about the chemically activated resins. Chemically activated products are supplied as two pastes system, one of which contains the benzoyl peroxide initiator, and the other contains an aromatic tertiary amine activator, which is dimethyl peritoliadin. When the two pastes are mixed together, the dimethyl peritoliadin reacts with the benzoyl peroxide to form free radicals and addition polymerization is initiated. Today, these materials are mainly used for restorations and in core buildups, that are not readily cured with a light source. Now, let's talk about the light-activated resins. Light curable dental composites are supplied as a single paste, contained in a light-proof syringe. The free radical initiating system contains a photosensitizer and an amine initiator, which are present in this paste. As long as these two components are not exposed to light, they do not interact. However, exposure to light in the blue region of the spectrum of light, produces an excited state of the photosensitizer, which then interacts with the amine, to form free radicals, and these free radicals initiates the addition polymerization. Camphorquinone is a commonly used photosensitizer. Camphorquinone absorbs blue light with wavelengths between 400 and 500 nanometer. Only small quantities of camphorquinone are required in the paste. A number of amine initiators are suitable for interaction with camphorquinone, such as dimethylaminoethyl methacrylate, which is also present at low levels into the paste. Now, let's talk about the inhibitors. Inhibitors are added to the resin system, to minimize or prevent spontaneous, or accidental polymerization of monomers. Inhibitors have a strong reactivity potential with free radicals. If a free radical is formed, for example, when the material is dispensed, there will be a brief exposure of the material to room lighting. When this happens the inhibitor reacts with the free radical faster, then the free radical can react with the monomer. This prevents chain propagation, by terminating the reaction before the free radical is able to initiate polymerization. After all of the inhibitor is consumed, chain propagation begins. This is how inhibitors stop spontaneous or accidental polymerization. A typical inhibitor is butylated hydroxytoluene, which is used in concentrations on the order of 0.01 weight percent. Thus inhibitors have two functions. They extend the storage lifetime for all resins, and they ensure sufficient working time. Now, let's talk about the optical modifiers. They provides the opacity, or translucency needed to make the composites similar to the natural tooth tissue. 
If composite material has a greater translucency, there will be greater amount of light passes through the material. So the material will appear more darker in shade, because light is not reflecting back from the composite material. If we have added opsifiers like titanium dioxide and aluminum oxide, we can get the desired shade of the material. Now, let's talk about the dual cure resins. One way to overcome limits on curing depth, and some of the other problems associated with light curing, is to combine chemical curing and visible light curing components in the same resin. These are called dual cure resins, and this dual cure resins are commercially available, and they consist of two light curable pastes system. In dual cure resin pastes, one paste contains benzoyl peroxide, and the other contains an aromatic tertiary amine. When these two pastes are mixed and then exposed to light, light curing is promoted by the amine and camphorquinone combination. And chemical curing is promoted by the amine and benzoyl peroxide interaction. Dual cure materials are intended for any situation, that does not allow sufficient light penetration, to produce adequate monomer conversion, for example, cementation of bulky ceramic inlays. Now before moving on to the classification of dental composite, let's take a look at the curing lamps used for the light cure activation of the composite material. Most curing lamps are in the handheld devices. These handheld devices contain the light source, and they are equipped with a relatively short and rigid light guide, this guides are made up of the fused optical fibers. This light guide directs the light to the specific point, where we need the light, for curing of the composite material. Four types of lamps may be used for photo initiation process. 1. QTH lamps QTH lamps have a quartz bulb with a tungsten filament, that irradiates both UV and white light. This UV and white light must be filtered to remove heat in all wavelengths, except those in the violet-blue range of the spectrum of light. The intensity of the bulb diminishes with use, so a calibration meter is required to measure the output intensity. Second is LED lamps. Using a solid-state electronic process, these light sources emits radiation, only in the blue part of the visible spectrum, which is between 440 and 480 nanometer, and they do not require filters. LED lights require low voltage, they can be battery powered, and they generate no heat, because of that a cooling fan is not needed. Although they produce the lowest intensity radiation, New technology is rapidly overcoming this limitation. Third is plasma arc curing lamps. They are high intensity light curing units. Plasma arc curing lamps use xenon gas that is ionized to produce a plasma. The high intensity light is filtered to remove heat, and to allow blue light to be emitted. And fourth lamp is argon laser lamps. Argon laser lamps have the highest intensity, and they emit at a single wavelength. Lamps currently available emit 490 nanometer. Now let's talk about precautions of using curing lamps. The light emitted by curing units can cause retinal damage, if a person looks directly at the beam for an extended period of time, or even for short periods in case of lasers. To avoid such damage never look directly into the light tip, and minimize observation of reflected light for longer periods. Protective eyeglasses, and various types of shields that filter the light, 
are available for increased protection for both clinical personnel and patients.